below everyone it's me here before watching the video please take 3 seconds to like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you very much wishing you all a happy new day who would have thought that while everything was calm suddenly she was transmigrated and bound by the system she even had to face an awkward situation the female lead had to earnestly plead with the system I really have no other way to complete the mission oh this water is so cold how could you bear to see a delicate young lady a beauty like me fall in there system in the form of a rabbit said mission countdown 30 seconds the host must complete the mission as soon as possible she boldly approached the man in the wheelchair and loudly declared I will not marry a disabled person like you according to the plot she had to disdain but still had to marry the disabled man she knew his family background the words came out against her will of course I no offending the chieftain won't lead to good results but there Lines just kept coming out unstoppable the chieftain, doesn't care what you say he calmly looked at her and said three months later I will send someone to escort, Miss Wadda the manor she was astonished that the family had after securing, this daughter-in-law even wanted to marry her and then as, the chieftain had announced an official wedding ceremony, took place they bowed to heaven and earth in their, wedding attire three loud calls rang out followed by three bows, then the husband and wife exchanged bows forced by fate she fell into a plot that couldn't be more amusing poor me a weak white rabbit, who has strayed into a wolf's den her reluctant wolf husband looked at her as if he wanted to devour her asking what's the matter don't, you want this but everything, took a 188 degrees turn after she greedily her new husband's, alluring physique her only intention now was I can only serve, the wolf with my body the man's legs were long, and straight she blushed as she stared her heart screaming who, could resist such a, beautiful body but reality, slapped her in the face as he pinned her against the wall she knew, one thing one day I'll devour you completely, he calmly smiled in satisfaction asking was it delicious her saliva, dripped in longing but she remained conscious reminding herself, I can't be defeated by this evil villainous, I must not ruin the plot in the romantic garden setting the system, appeared in the form of a rabbit a mission notification sounded please commit suicide in front of the chief and everyone else to demonstrate your unwillingness to marry into the manor complete the mission to receive a bee of blessings failure will result in punishment please quickly complete the mission your grace she was sitting admiring the flowers disturbed she couldn't help but skill the system the previous missions were enough system but I can't swim you know what if I jump in and immediately drown the little black rabbit reminded her the mission has one minute remaining please quickly complete mission 59 your grace 58 she immediately acted as a frail maiden pleading earnestly truly can't the mission be completed another way why must you she be so cold hearted to make, a young maiden like me do such a thing but the rabbit paid no heed to her meaningless words it reminded her again 30 seconds remaining for the mission please, quickly complete the mission your grace she could only grit her teeth tears streaming as she cursed inwardly damn system just you wait she suddenly stood up and said to Hu Ding Zong father of H Manman further I do not wish to marry that crippled chieftain if you force me I'll kill myself for you to see, the man in the wheelchair was chieftain la whom she was, unwilling to marry without a moment's hesitation she jumped into the pond as the servants panicked and rushed over shouting oh no oh no the young lady jumped into the pond, she fell into the pond inwardly cursing stop shouting and save me instead she flailed gasping for air I'm going to drown quadding Zong's face drained of color horrified as he watched his daughter struggle for life underwater it's over I thought I could use H Manman to hook the chief to not only did I fail to hook him this time but I've also lost my life the servants around divided themselves some to rescue her others to inform the lady as for me Juan Manman I was still struggling in the pond, my name is Umanman as you all saw I transmigrated, into a book not only becoming the vicious, villainous in the book but also being bound to play an, insignificant role when the servants rescued me I inwardly cursed the system's 18 generations of ancestors the system indeed is not human it told me to commit suicide in front of the chieftain and so many people by the time I, I was brought to shore I had nearly lost half my little life but if I didn't, maintain my character setting and complete the mission assigned, by the system then a, t 
terrifying punishment would be inflicted, on me severe heart pain even eating would, cause heart pain and death even while sleeping in bed at night, I'd have to toss and turn embracing the pain ah uh, until my, soul left my body I was about to faint lying the crying until I had no tears left but now it's too late to start over inwardly I deeply regretted that if I had known, it would be this miserable I would have, died instead of opening the book Kung U in the first place I was suffering so much when suddenly a hand struck down, Quading Zong angrily slapped Manman and scolded her how could you do such, thoughtless things you still don't know how to apologize, to his highness the chieftain she held her painful face inwardly she was, grumbling about who did this it hurt so much that, she started crying but since she had started acting she would act till, the end I don't want to marry the chieftain she, said angrily I don't want to marry her inwardly she knew full well that, person's status of course I know offending, the chieftain would lead to no good outcome woohoo but the words kept coming our chieftain glanced at her she had no other choice otherwise she would immediately collapse, to the ground she needed to complete, this mission she knelt before her father and pleaded earnestly father, please beg him to let me break off the marriage with their, chieftain your daughter truly does not wish to jump into, a pit of fire her mouth said that but inwardly she secretly begged who 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 your highness the chieftain please be magnanimous, and disregard this little one these were not her, true feelings hearing this Jua Ding Zong's expression became even uglier he raised his hand about to slap her and scold, loudly what nonsense is this unruly girl spouting now, but lady suddenly rushed over and stopped his hand the mission was completed just in time the system's voice, sounded congratulations host for completing the critical plot, point of the mission lady M came over and hugged, M Manman saying Manman has suffered enough if you don't care then forget, it but don't hit the girl you're her own father seeing M Ding Zong still angry lady M quickly said no 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 you can hit me too if there's an issue you can hit both, of us mother and daughter Hui Ding Zong angrily said to her while, clenching his fists what are you doing so shameless Ju M, Manman was sheltered in her mother's, embrace sweating profusely as she thought in any case I don't want to die anymore but how do I back out now Quading Zong apologized outwardly saying to the chieftain your highness the little girl, doesn't understand and spoke nonsense I've, troubled your highness please don't blame the girl but inwardly he sighed thinking this matter of Minan's marriage to the chieftain might be called off or, I could try with my eldest daughter, after calculating he looked at the chieftain, and continued regarding your highness's marriage with my, young daughter I don't know your highness's intentions, our manor has another daughter if your highness, does not object let me mention her wading zonk thought to, himself her appearance is also top notch there, chieftain will surely be pleased as for changing her birth characters, we can do that later hearing this the chieftain stared, intently at one man then coldly replied no need seeing him look, at her one man felt terrified in her heart oh, mother oh mother does he want to kill me the lady had just finished, asking his highness when chieftain Liji wheeled, closer and looked straight at him and man her heart trembled, as she thought what should I do he's looking at me he won't, send someone to assassinate me for saving his life, right at this moment the chief leaned close and said next to her don't, think you can play any tricks in front of this king, no matter what you'll have to marry me after saying that the chieftain, added on the 3d of next month this king will send someone, to escort the two misses into the palace don't hit her, again after all this king has already taken her as a concubine hearing, this Huading Zong clasped his hands and, obediently agreed Uman and thought to herself in surprise this is not, a marriage cancellation but according, to the normal development he should be, furious and immediately cancel the marriage with me and then I would be forced, to enter the palace with the female lead the chief said to his, Subordinate I'm tired let's return to the manor there, subordinate replied yes she thought further why does he want to, marry me as the wheelchair passed by the chieftain, glanced at Jua Manman could it be that he wants to take revenge on me on the wedding day red lanterns were hung up the wedding, ceremony began he cried her eyes out as she sent her daughter off in the bridal sedan chair to her husband's home the sedan chair grabbed gradually entered the gate while joyous music played the surroundings were lively with, guests attending Manman and Lip performed the ritual of, 
bowing twice to heaven and earth and twice to the main hall the two of them faced each other and bowed husband and wife exchanged three bows before entering the bridal chamber the room was decorated predominantly in red tones manman put down the fan in her hand from her sleeve she took out a chicken drumstick she took a huge bite making up for not having eaten all day eating and mumbling rolling around all day i'm starving the situation had unfolded like this but why hadn't the system appeared yet suddenly someone outside announced the prince's arrival it startled her while she was still eating she was flustered unsure where to hide the food in her hand why was he coming in so quickly acting hastily she threw it out the window unfortunately the chicken drumstick hit a maid passing by who threw that carelessly lay slowly entered with his wheelchair today he looked truly handsome in his bridegroom attire manman was stunned when she saw him appear here she sat on the bed using a fan to cover her face softly calling, Your Highness she was extremely cautious thinking he's here he's here the male lead in romantic novel has arrived Lo with his male leads Halo silently looked at Hermanen's face dark and her gaze serious as she looked at him hoping he wouldn't mention her attempting suicide by refusing to marry him otherwise she would she imagined the worst case scenario herself like a Radish lying under Lee's sharp blade being chopped into eight pieces. Suddenly he called out Wayne and hearing his voice, made her tremble in fear almost crying she timidly called your, highness secretly hoping he must have forgotten right he tilted his, head and smiled ha he reached out and took the fan from, her she was a bit puzzled. By this action a he began questioning her why did you wish to die that day and not marry this king as expected she screamed internally. I knew he would bring that up Li snatched the fan from her hand she began, acting dramatically to respond to his question, because this concubine heard people say your, highness is a very frightening person this concubine was afraid so, she dared not marry he moved closer to her body and said oh when you first, met how did you find this king she stuttered unexpectedly unable to form words your highness is a man of perfect looks unmatched in this world her, praise was far from reality he was indeed shaken to hear those words from her for he was truly a villain he found his wife rather amusing he listened silently as she spoke she continued praising him excessively her intuitions obvious your highness is a man of virtue and propriety extremely upright but she thought yet his heart is wicked his temperament unstable a villain without blinking he smiled faintly almost not smiling and said oh you're quite the actress everything this concubine, said is true she claimed but in her heart she was lamenting oh my leg hurts so much I pinched it too hard earlier it's probably swollen now with his keen eyes he soon saw through her true nature he couldn't help but mock in his mind truly a deceitful woman that day he had a near death experience when he opened his eyes he saw people surrounding him they said great he's awake outwardly they seemed concerned for him thank goodness your highness is awake but he could read their true intentions always wanting him to perish why hasn't he died yet I thought we'd get a new commander what's for dinner tonight he frowned in displeasure his eyes closed too noisy if not for last month when I was injured on the battlefield and woke up able to hear others thoughts I might have been deceived by her long go on the other side manman was anxious looking around he turned to leave and said this king is tired she rejoiced about to successfully see him off cheering in her heart he's preparing to leave great he paused hearing her pretend to lament husband won't you state night this concubine doesn't want to be alone but if he couldn't hear her thoughts things would be different she thought you dare stay here just try it hurry and leave she was worried I don't know how to avoid serving him tonight fortunately he turned back and said who said this king wants to leave so early come here and help this king change clothes then serve she froze upon hearing that change clothes and serve he teased why the unwillingness her face darkened as she replied no I cannot attend to your highness it is truly this concubine's blessing from three lifetimes ago to have Liz sit on the bed and let me help remove his robes she fumbled for a while but didn't know how to help him take off his robes her hands kept searching until he impatiently asked how long will you keep groping he deliberately pulled her her closer he criticized the nod is here you're so clumsy she was slightly surprised by his action finally his robes were removed he exposed his bare chest s, 
smiling and saying let's go to sleep Manman was thin-skinned immediately turning red hot as if about to smoke stuttering go to sleep while Lu was leisurely awaiting her service she clenched her fists embarrassed it seemed unavoidable rewind to the day she got married in the room her mother guided her on serving the prince lady ha said Manman you're married now you must understand these things quick look here if you don't understand ask mother she held an 18 plus illustration in her hands not allowed to look back to the present she trembled at Lee's captivating beauty to be honest Lee's body is too perfect but she was startled realizing she was looking at him strangely her gaze fixed on him unblinkingly his long straight legs seemed to glow dazzling her eyes but his legs aren't very convenient should I take the initiative she blushed secretly calculating jumping onto him first yes that's right she fell onto his body then wanted to touch his skin and grope him after not stopping that she would force intimacy with, him finally kissing him just thinking about it made her face flush this is too, stimulating she calmed herself down, looking at him lying on the bed he on the other hand had been, observing there with an amused gaze all along, she blushed quickly untying her belt and flying onto the bed then she, swiftly grabbed the blanket she curled up inside, the blanket leaving only her eyes peeking out out, watching Lee she mumbled your highness let's go to sleep, he replied with noble demeanor indeed we should go to sleep, Manman screamed inwardly oh no it's really starting he had known what she was thinking all along he spoke up, to dispel her thoughts about getting on the bed she innocently replied yes let's go to sleep but he made a displeased face and said you cannot sleep here you sleep over the she, was startled bluntly kicked out by him without any mercy she was, angry but couldn't do anything silently cursing him I, endured hardship and blame tossing and turning with this wretched, man only to be kicked out from the bridal chamber in, the middle of the night to sleep. Outside his sharp knife-like, gaze fell on Manman and he changed his tone to appease, her yes your highness I'll go over the right away outside the moon had risen high it was midnight Manman had fallen into a deep sleep while she was still tossing, and turning he recalled her perverted gaze earlier when, she looked at him as if she wanted to do something while he was, asleep unexcedly she fell asleep so quickly he found her, sleeping posture quite telling she was sleeping so soundly he lay, down and closed his eyes thinking to himself this woman is truly strange he lay on the bed pensive thinking back to the, past that day seeing her suicidal state at the Jong, on Marius's mansion I thought of calling off the marriage little did I, no I would later hear her inner thoughts her thoughts, differed from her outward appearance back then, Manman desperately screamed I don't want to, marry that contrary to that she was was actually lamenting inwardly her inner monologue went on and on he propped himself up gazing at her sleeping soundly, and couldn't help but smile that's why I changed my mind and, didn't call off the marriage I wanted to see what she would actually, do but it seems her boy crazy reincarnated behavior is vastly, different from what Le had expected in her heart apart from those strange thoughts there were no other schemes Manman, dreamed she was eating chicken drumsticks and even had bad sleeping habits that gave him a different perspective could it be that I, was mistaken perhaps instead of, overthinking I should probe further in the morning, the sun had risen to H. Jong Hai but Manman, was still deep in slumber tossing and turning suddenly, she felt a chill from behind startled she sat up, in a panic her gaze still dazed and unfocused appeared saying you're awake she shyly asked your highness why are you up so early he smiled and said early in the army I always rise at this hour from now on you should get used to waking up at this time too hearing this her face was full of black lines from now on this wasn't just for today so I can't sleep in anymore she was unwilling and determined to struggle she couldn't live like a lazy fish she had to fight for her Dream she immediately got into character A.G. Grieve telling the prince now I'm like a little rabbit being bullied by a big bad wolf list only almost frighteningly question Manman why are you unwilling she trembled thinking of giving up those under the eaves must not bow their heads she regained her composure neatly are arranging the blanket she then jumped off the bed ha ha she boldly stood and said no I'm very willing this servant will listen to your highness in everything if your highness goes east then this, servant will absolutely not go west as your, highness have any other instructions suddenly he, 
beckoned her over with a wave with a cheerful expression he said help this prince change clothes she was terrified and wanted to flee immediately while the maid set the table over the manman had finished helping lit change her gaze was drawn to the table and her saliva involuntarily drooled joyfully thinking to herself finally i can eat a meal he gently called out to someone outside and a man's voice rang out your highness your medicine has arrived the steward gashan brought in a tray of medicine for the prince the imperial physician had said this medicine will be very effective when taken Hot manman glanced at the medicine bowl being brought over his expression suddenly became tense a stifling atmosphere enveloped them as if choking their breath she forced a fake smile inwardly think thinking why does the atmosphere feel so wrong the corner of his mouth curled up slightly but this prince doesn't want to take the medicine I prefer to be the steward gun and the servants were terrified they hurriedly knelt down begging there prince to calm down leaning back casually, he said calm down what's there to be angry about this prince being a furthermore this prince is already crippled do you all think this prince is easy to bully he glanced at Minan's reaction and asked Durin do you think so too she was startled when called out just because I'm lying down I've been given a name that's not allowed I can still save the situation she fawned like a puppy saying this servant could never think that way your highness everyone is only thinking of your health you are the true son of heaven if your legs are crippled wouldn't that be a great pity inwardly she was screaming drink it for me hurry and drink it don't make trouble anymore I'm really so hungry wah 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 he asked if this prince's legs don't recover will you be very disappointed she boldly replied of course not no matter what happens to your highness I will love you completely but if I could choose this servant still hopes your highness can be healthy she brought the medicine bowl to coax Lee your health is the most important he replied very good, he was about to reach for it then heard her inner voice you want to drink it now just as he brought the medicine bowl to his mouth he suddenly pushed it back saying since you care so much then you take a sip of this medicine, first for this prince see if it's poisonous or not her face turned pale with fear it seemed there was no escape she had to pick it up and take a sip trying to appear fine but inwardly she was in tears saying, there's no problem with this medicine your highness please drink it quickly he pretended to have a stomach ache and said this prince told you to test the medicine with a spoon not to put your mouth on it and bathe in it do you want this prince to drink the saliva from your mouth she was flustered and suggested then this servant will tell someone to brew another bowl for your highness he bluntly and coldly refused no knee then he drank the entire bowl in one gulp when when everything was settled he said all right we can eat now all of you withdraw she was overjoyed jumping up and down finally we can eat gone bowed and acknowledged yes she was like a starving tiger continuously scooping food chewing noisily munch 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 next to her he took something out from his sleeve he put a white pill in his mouth and swallowed it seeing this she was a bit puzzled stopped her chopsticks and asked your highness, what are you eating he calmly replied the medicine just now was poisoned so this prince took an antidote pill she was, horrified dropping her chopsticks stuttering what, what it was po poisoned lay next to her was inwardly, pleased watching man man's terrified expression she was indeed, deathly afraid it seemed her scrutinizing gaze was, silently observing Manon's reaction the fox's tail, was revealed and he became wary her hands clenched, tightly but contrary to expectations she kept clearing the food, from the plates, thinking to herself anyway, I'm going to die I need to eat my fill why fear death when, I'm going to die I might as well become a well-fed ghost he, had a gloomy expression watching her, eat as if this was her last meal after a while the carriage was running, briskly on the empty street inside the carriage Liz silently, watched Manman eat to her heart's content, he said with amusement actually you could have eaten a bit, more in case you die then you could become a well-fed ghost as, you wished she asked curiously and innocently how, did your highness know this servant wanted to Manan how did your highness know there was poison in the medicine, and if you knew, why did you still drink it? She suddenly paused, her gaze accidentally meeting his a dark aura emanated from him as he fixed her with a furious stare a prince hasn't anyone told you? The more you know, the sooner you die she trembled, forcing a nervous smile, terrified beyond measure finally, the carriage came to a stop servant your highness, we've arrived at the duke's residence the prince waved his hand dismissively come here she hesitated, unsure of what to do, 
until he grabbed her wrist, startling her as he drew closer. She stammered Mun and your highness. He pressed a finger to her pulse point prince what are you thinking? Outside, the servants began lowering the palanquin he stepped out first, reminding her to follow him into the duke's residence as they entered. She suddenly realized her hiccups had stopped Mun and I'm not hiccuping anymore. Your highness, yeah he scoffed, watching her smile foolishly prince be quiet at the duke's residence. They were seated in the guest room a servant entered bowing respectfully servant please, have some tea and pastries, your highness, madam I will inform his grace the duke man and stared at the pastries, unable to look away as saliva pulled in her mouth the prince noticed and deliberately picked up a pastry prince do you want one? she swallowed hard but tried to restrain herself, forcing a polite response man and this servant is not hungry, your highness please, enjoy but inside, she was screaming, I want it so badly, but I must endure. Why do humans only have one stomach? He took a bite, savoring the flavor, and smiled. Prince this is delicious. She listened intently as he described it. Prince the almonds are crispy, the milk flavor is rich it's truly delightful. Her frustration grew, and she cursed silently. Don't say any more, you scoundrel. Seeing her sulking, he was satisfied just then. The senior eunuch entered eunuch your highness. The duke is unwell and cannot receive guests please forgive him the prince's gaze turned cold prince if my mother's illness persists, she should continue resting I'll visit another time he turned to leave, and Munan quickly followed as they reached the gate, Le's younger brother, Li Lao, appeared Li Lao elder brother, you're back, and this must be the young lady, Dang Wu her beauty is like a flower elder brother. You're truly blessed Li Lao smirked you've had a difficult journey I'll have the kitchen prepare a feast we should drink together he continued rambling by the way, have you met the Duchess Dowager? She's unwell and asked me to stay and care for her men and silently evaluated the situation the gentle Duchess Dowager is ill, yet she'd rather see her grandson than meet her own son their relationship must be terrible Li Lao flaunted I've been staying at elder brother's former residence even these clothes I'm wearing used to belong to you. Elder brother you don't mind, do you? Prince Despicable Menon almost burst out laughing Li Lao, embarrassed, pressed on Li Lao elder brother, I know you're upset because I've been taking care of the dowager while you missed your own wedding but you've been so busy if I don't care for her, who will? He looked at the servants around him I know you're unhappy because the dowager favors me if that's the case, I'll leave the servants knelt, holding him back servants young master, if you leave who will care for the duchess, Li Lao feigned sympathy but I can't let elder brother be unhappy even though elder brother doesn't often visit the dowager, there's still blood the prince, growing weary of the act, tilted his head prince you know I'm the real master here wearing my clothes, staying in my room said does that mean you can inherit my title as duke of Tangwa? Li Lao turned pale, his true intentions exposed Li Lao, thinking, how did he guess? I came here to force him to leave I can't give up now the prince's mocking smile widened prince you're abusing your power, huh? He showed no mercy, ordering the servants prince strip him of those clothes I want to see for myself Li Lao cried out in fear as he was forcibly undressed, leaving him in his underwear a servant hesitated servant your highness, what should we do with these clothes? The prince didn't hesitate prince burn them Menon gasped Menon, thinking, those clothes look valuable. It'd be a waste to burn them. He heard her and couldn't help but mock her. Prince truly a greedy woman. But she thought of something else. They could be sold and the money donated to orphan girls. He was surprised by her suggestion. Prince don't burn them. Sell them and donate the money to charity. She be man and great. That would be a good deed. Seeing her joyful smile, he nodded Li Lao, covering his body. Seethed with rage Li Lao how dare you humiliate me like this, and donate my clothes to filthy beggars! Exclamation mark Menon grew worried Menon your highness, won't you get in trouble if he reports you? The prince doubted her concern was genuine is she really worried about me? He leaned on his arm, dejectedly prince I'll be fine he then gave a new order to the servants prince go to the high iron residence move out anything valuable, sell it and donate the money in the queen's name anything that can't be moved to destroy it a hint of bitterness in his voice my belongings even if I don't need them, I don't want a dog wearing them at the high iron residence, the servants smashed everything Menon watched in astonishment, feeling a pang of sadness Menon, 
thinking, this is where he grew up he should be filled with nostalgia, yet he shows no attachment whatsoever suddenly, a malicious voice echoed voice Leti, you are your father's misfortune you caused his death, yet you dare return and humiliate your brother as Li Lao entered, accompanied by the Maris of Nuren, Li Tai's mother Li Lao gritted his teeth Li Lao your majesty, my brother humiliated me but that's not all he knew you were ill, yet not only did he refuse to serve you, he ordered the destruction of the prince's residence he's gone too far the Maris of Nuren approached coldly, questioning Li Tai Maris of Nuren isn't Li Tai dead yet? Yet you treat your brother like this, even destroying his high iron residence are you trying to rebel? Menon, angered, thought, the Maris of Nuren avoids her own son, yet because of her grandson, Maris of Nuren you unfilial son, how dare you defy my teachings these belong to the prince's residence stop this at once prince he responded calmly, making her freeze in place the high iron residence was gifted to me by my father everything inside belongs to me Maris of Nuran oh no she exclaimed, but he clenched his fist slightly, his voice steely prince I'll handle it as I see fit she rushed madly toward him, screaming. You have no right to mention him it's you who killed the prince the servants quickly stopped the Maris, but she paid no heed, her accusations relentless if not for you, he wouldn't have died despite her anger, he remained composed prince my father died in an enemy ambush it had nothing to do with me Maris of Nuran she didn't believe him, shouting, you're lying the prince fought for years on the battlefield, and nothing happened but as soon as you arrived. He died you must have harmed him you're an ominous star you killed him she went mad, holding her head and muttering, why didn't you die instead of him, why, why can you still live like this, why didn't I strangle you to death when you were a child, if I had, the prince wouldn't have died her eyes filled with hatred as she spoke, her words dripping with cruelty yes, if you had died, the prince could live again slowly, she took out a poisoned hairpin die you die suddenly, she thrust the hairpin, aiming to stab the prince ignoring her pleas to stop, the hairpin pierced flesh, blood splattering everywhere it was Manon's tender white arm that had been stabbed she had stepped forward, using her own body to protect the prince he was surprised by her sudden action, and she forced a smile, trying to reassure him Manon your highness, I'm alright the wound is not deep he was speechless at her rashness Manon it hurts so much that hairpin wasn't poisoned, was it? I won't die from lockjaw, right? He turned and scolded her prince I didn't need you to save me don't be so foolish again hearing this, she couldn't help but exclaim, oh he looked coldly at the disheveled Maris prince go back. He ordered Men and everyone left, leaving the Maris collapsed on the ground her remaining memories were of a large and small figure holding hands, a once attached place now silent and filled with memories. Later, Back at the High Iron Residence, Menon was diligently applying medicine and bandaging her wound the prince watched her, stunned by her determination Menon ah, it hurts so much a warm feeling seemed to seep into his heart for this woman, so clearly frail, yet at that moment, she had protected him his gaze was fixed on her as he wondered to himself, what on earth is she thinking? Menon approached and asked, your highness, what are you thinking about so seriously? He turned away avoiding her gaze prince although you are very foolish, I have always been clear about rewards and punishments you just blocked a blade for me or whatever reward you want, just say it she exclaimed in surprise at being offered a reward this could actually be rewarded, she pondered carefully but it seems I don't lack anything if you really want to reward me, then suddenly, she looked up, her face lighting up man and I've got it she turned to him with a flattering look and said, your highness, may I have a soft mattress? This bed is too hard it's really not comfortable to sleep on he was a bit surprised by her simple request, thinking he might not agree and she pleaded with a pitiful look, it's cold without a mattress and blanket a soft pillow would be fine too he was deep in thought it seems she really only wants a blanket but he reflected on himself, recalling the cruel words he had heard from others in the past he's a fool how can he command an army? How can he fight? In the end, isn't he just a waste? I don't think he'll ever get better if I give my daughter to him and she bears him a child. Then I'll kill him at that time, won't that grand chieftain manner then belong to me? Apostrophe in that bitter reminiscence, he realized that, since gaining the ability to read minds, 
he had heard most of these calculations the suspicions and hostility from everyone meanwhile, Menon had only hoped for his nod of approval Menon I just want a blanket that bed is so hard if I continue like this, I'll definitely get a backache he looked at her, beside him, and thought, but she doesn't have any ulterior motives a while later, a palace maid entered to report made your highness, there. Made the blanket is ready, she announced prince he coldly instructed, very well, you may leave Manman joyfully rolled around on the new blanket thank you for the reward, your highness he unconsciously smiled I didn't expect something so simple could make her so happy she remained immersed in the warmth the blanket provided he sighed, leaning back in his chair prince I'll stay in her room for a few more days that way, those people will know my attitude and won't dare to plot against her so easily that night, the early moon had risen high in the room, Manman was sound asleep when suddenly, she let out agonized moans who knows what she was dreaming of to make her struggle so in her sleep, in her dream, she was reliving her childhood a hand grabbed her head, ignoring her pleading cries young Manman no, no, father, don't hit me anymore I promise I'll listen, just don't hit me anymore the cruel man's voice cursed, if not for this unlucky star like you he forcefully pushed Manman's head down, causing her pain when she lifted her head, a long streak of blood appeared on her forehead father then my company wouldn't have gone bankrupt your mother wouldn't have run off with someone else you are the disaster, the harbinger of misfortune each word was clear, like a knife piercing through her heart further everyone close to you will meet no good end why don't you just die, you are an ill omen, a monster the dream suddenly shifted, merging into something more terrifying she panicked and screamed, no she fell unconscious into Lit's arms in her mind, there were two other figures her father, filled with hatred, and Lit's gentle mother, also consumed by rage both wielded knives, charging at her voices I'll kill you she tried to stop them but to no avail she hugged Lit tightly, protecting him from harm, her eyes shut tight in fear she startled awake it was just a dream the sun had already cast its rays through the window she immediately set up, raising her sleeve to shield her eyes from the dazzling sunlight, relieved that the nightmare was over Manman she muttered to herself in a daze, it's fine, the nightmare is over from outside came the voice of a maid maid lady who, the ladies of the west garden wish to see you she asked the maid, puzzled, the west garden, in the reception room, Manman sat solemnly, with Garn beside her a group of ladies knelt below, weeping bitterly ladies please, my lady, take us in as maids, don't drive us away, we only wish to serve you Manman turned and asked Garn quietly, Garn, why are these ladies weeping so bitterly, what did you do to make them feel so wronged, Garn, flustered and feeling wronged himself, explained, my lady, these are all people sent by the emperor, the empress dowager, and the crown princess how dare I neglect them, they have been well treated these days I even told them to eat well so why are they making such a scene, he continued, it's just that the prince instructed me to send them to the west garden he doesn't want to see them anymore seeing the ladies kneeling on the ground, Manman asked, puzzled, if their food and drink are good, why do they still beg to stay and serve me, Garn replied, my lady may not know, but they are unwilling to suffer in the west garden, unable to see the prince they just want to get close to him suddenly, Garn's expression changed he tensed and quickly knelt down, saying, the prince is here before Manman could fully realize, someone entered, and she exclaimed in surprise, Prince Lit Prince Lit was pushed in by his attendants, his face unreadable the worry in Manman's heart rose would he misunderstand her for mistreating these people, although Lit sat in a wheelchair, his handsome face was impossible to overlook even the ladies from the west garden were captivated ladies, thoughts, so this is Prince Lit indeed a crippled man it's a pity he's so handsome, a disdainful thought crossed one of their minds, no matter his looks or tricks, we are no less than those palace ladies Prince Lit will definitely notice us as long as we have a chance, we will complete the mission our master gave us Lit's gaze suddenly turned cold as he glanced at them, sensing their plotting the wheelchair slowly moved in, and he waved his hand, signaling the servants to stop beside Manman Prince Lit he called out, your highness he spoke coldly, ordering, drag these ladies out kill them if they resist the ladies were startled and terrified, their faces drained of color the subordinates forcibly dragged them out, 
ignoring their frantic screams and please ladies your highness, spare our lives your highness, please seeing the situation spiraling out of control, one lady broke free and took out a hidden dagger without hesitation, she rushed toward Lit with the intent to kill in this critical moment, Lit remain unusually calm man man, horrified, instinctively moved to protect him again, but Prince Lit grabbed her wrist, gently holding her back their eyes met, and he silently pressed a secret button on his chair, firing two darts to subdue the attacker Manman was dazed, not fully understanding what had happened only then did he release her hand Prince Lit he calmly ordered his subordinates, take them away. Prince Lit take them away and deal with them if anyone asks, tell them those ladies stole from the prince's mansion and were executed for it. The subordinates acknowledged the order, and the servants busied themselves cleaning up the scene Prince Lit glanced at Manman Prince Lit from now on, don't be so foolish I always have hidden weapons on me there's no need for you to shield me with your body Manman leaned against a pillar, sighed, and asked, but how did you know they were assassins? Did they reveal any flaws? Litun how could I not see their issues? He then added, look at you of course, you can't see with your blind eyes Manman fell silent, her face scrunched up indeed. I'm blind only the blind would marry a dog like you, she retorted angrily, turning away Lit frowned at being called a dog and glanced at her with innocent eyes Manman curiously, she asked, if you knew they were assassins, why didn't you leave one to interrogate to make them reveal who was behind this? Lit and he leaned back, stroking his chin they had special combat skills one look and I knew they were professionally trained it would be difficult to make them talk on the contrary they might turn on each other and create more chaos it's best not to get involved with them he thought to himself, moreover, they were sent by the emperor if I investigate further, it might cause a falling out between us Manman thought, he doesn't seem like much, but there are so many dangers around him indeed, being a villain is not easy lit wondered, a villain, so, in her heart, I'm only fit to be a villain character. Then he firmly grasped Manman's hand Litun were you scared just now? Manman shyly, she replied, with you here, I'm not afraid of anything she bloomed inside, thinking, he he, this sweet reply must have moved him at least a little. Lit leaned closer and lifted her chin tomorrow is the day you return to your mother's home I will go with you Manman blushed shyly he actually brought this up proactively aren't you moved that I'm doing this? Manman could only stammer, eh no, I dare not Lit then firmly grasped her chin Manman hurriedly, she said, I'm moved, I'm moved, concubine. There are no words to express this feeling. Just then. A servant entered and whispered something to the prince servant rumors are spreading in lit manner that you beat your mother upon hearing this, lit turned to Manman litun I'll be out for a bit Manman she replied, it's almost mealtime where are you going? Could it be something important? Lit meaningfully, he said, to meet a little person at the green pavilion at the green pavilion, lit smugly embraced a courtesan and said, if you serve me well in the future. I'll take you to the palace as my wife the courtesan shyly replied, this servant looks forward to it the two were flirting when suddenly, the door burst open lit angrily, he shouted, who dares to break in so recklessly, before he could finish, lit appeared lit turned pale with fear lit brother, why have you come here, then he sat down, flustered and afraid, as the courtesans hurriedly ran away lit in a panic, lit said, tell me what you want, brother what can you do to me, I'll report you to the empress dowager she won't let you off easily, lit calmly, he replied, so, you're afraid now, you spread rumors so freely, but didn't think there would be consequences, did you, lit's face twisted with fear as he thought, how does he already know, he has no evidence I can't admit to it lit confidently you're falsely accusing me, brother even if you dislike me, you can't make baseless accusations lit un need evidence, he ordered, Tran Vong, bring him in they dragged in a trembling, drunken man who immediately knelt drunken man forgive me, your highness I didn't want to betray you, but I had no choice I deserve to die, I deserve to die lit fearfully you're dead you can't kill me lit un turned and left as lit's screams echoed from inside, you useless waste the prince won't let you live in peace lit un ordered, Remember to take him to the palace tonight Tran Vong replied, yes, your highness then added, the emperor requests that when you're done here, 
you visit him he has something to discuss with you Lit's face darkened as he replied, I'm in the imperial study room, the emperor's voice rang out sternly emperor have you dealt with it, Lit? I know Duchess Nguyen has caused you much humiliation, but after the Duke of Tranque passed away, it was a heavy blow for her she couldn't take it and went mad, as I've heard Lit recalled that day when Duchess Nguyen glared at him hatefully, saying, you ungrateful wretch, go die he listened coldly as the emperor advised, you're her child, whom she carried for ten months before giving birth from start to end, she only loved you Litan smiled bitterly, whispering, is that so, I used to think a mother's love was the greatest in this world the emperor pondered, then said, ha ha, later you'll take over the duke of Tranquay's estate perhaps, with time, she'll find peace the emperor then inquired, I've heard that Hunan protected you this time it seems the astrologer's predictions were accurate you've killed too many your killing aura is too heavy you need a woman born on the fifth day of the fifth month to suppress it Hunan you I averted a disaster it seems I should quickly bring Hani into your household Latan quickly said, I don't believe in such superstitions before he could finish, the emperor cut him off, enough prepare to bring Hani into your manor in half a month after all. Hunan Nguyen has saved you for the next few days, stay with her Lit could only reply, yes late at night, in the prince's manner, Lit Han recalled the emperor's words Lit, I know you resent your mother in your heart, but you must remember, in this world, she loves you the most mocking inwardly, he thought, the one who loves me most in this world, after father left, no one loved me unconditionally Mammon's image appeared in his mind and his heart suddenly calmed Manman was now happily packing her belongings when Lit appeared, his face dark and Lit packing so hurriedly, want to leave? His voice startled Manman, making her cry out Lit approached her from behind, asking suggestively, a cruel voice rang in Lit's mind this ungrateful wretch, get lost the astrologer said Chong is an ominous star anyone staying with him will die leave quickly, hurry or he'll bring you misfortune Litan whispered in her ear, an ominous star, huh? Then scoffed Manman stammered, trying to explain, so he turned her around Lit you're afraid of me and want to leave, don't you? Looking into his eyes, Manman pushed his hand away Lit's face darkened as he said, Manman, you belong to me, remember that then, he lifted her chin, forcibly kissing her lips he whispered, even if you die, you cannot leave me Manman trembled, then fainted thinking in shock, I just wanted to move some things back to the manor why did he suddenly act like that? Lit heard her thoughts and was taken aback, then quickly pushed her away Lit pretending to ask calmly you want to pack up and go back to the manor tomorrow, right? Manman that's right did your highness forget? I mentioned it this morning the two looked at each other in silence Lit covered his mouth and replied, I didn't forget I'll go with you tomorrow Manman looked at Lit, puzzled the next day, on the carriage back. Lit sat beside Manman, who had her eyes closed, resting Manman pondered, didn't expect Lit to follow me home she suddenly blushed but last night, he was afraid I'd leave out the window now, she saw people bustling to provide relief to the citizens voices rang out loudly voices slow down everyone will get their share seeing this, Lit explained, I took some things from the high on manor and used your name to raise donations for this whole month. You ladies will stay here to provide relief hearing this, Manman asked curiously, why did your highness want to use my name? It's your money you should use your own name lit uncoldly nonsense she excitedly thought, I didn't expect the legendary Kaya Wong to be an upright person and quite adorable hearing this, lit ears turned red he thought to himself, how dare she call me adorable, so disrespectful it seems I must teach her a lesson before he could speak. The servant outside had already announced, Your Highness, we've arrived at the Jongan Manor. At the Jongan Manor, the household knelt to pay respects. Household we greet Your Highness and Lady Hanana Litan accepted the greeting. Rise, all of you the Prince and Lady Hanana have returned no need for such formalities. Jua Ding Tong turned to ask, Your Highness, have you dined yet? Please, at my humble abode Litan coldly replied. Let's assess the situation first as Manman was about to leave, a mission sound rang out. A mission prompt suddenly rang in Manman's mind, host, slap Lady Hukun can with a heavy slap time limit, one hour upon completion, you'll receive a red envelope reward if you fail to complete the mission within the time limit, 
The host will be subject to punishment please complete the mission promptly Manman was furious system, you're being ridiculous again you're always trying to harm me in the living room of the Jemgan Manor, Lady Hua flatteringly offered tea, saying, your highness, please have some tea Manman sat dazed, thinking, although there are circumstances where I, Manman, must slap Lady Hukin. I'm not entering the palace anymore why can't I escape this fate of opposing her? Life is not easy, but I should still try to find a solution Manman turned to ask Hashi, elder sister, have you been well lately? Hashi took her hand and said, today is the day you return why ask about me? She's doing well the old madam has been preparing her wedding trousseau lately it seems in a few days, she will indeed marry Tong Ding her eyes sparkled with delight. Showing her joyful mood she unexpectedly repeated, getting married. In this imperial harem, Lady Hukun Kan had a betrothed husband, Tong Ding they were a matched couple, the two innocents but before they could marry, Tong Ding was snatched away by H. Manman Manman, you've liked taking the lady's things since childhood, leading to her wanting to call off the marriage Tong Ding said to Hukun Kan, I'm sorry. I cannot marry you the one I love is H. Manman H. Manman arrogantly slapped her can can, calling her a useless thing, saying, your man can be snatched away by me now I've proven how useless you are what good is finding me? If you have any issues, find your original man due to her can seeking out H. Manman to argue, she was slapped again by H. Manman from then on, the two were completely estranged or perhaps I could start from here, Manman suddenly thought she stood up and said, Excuse me, father and mother I just remembered, child, there's something I need to find elder sister about elder sister, I'll go ahead before anyone could react, her father and mother called out in alarm, wait lit watched her leave, his gaze pensive in the garden, manman searched everywhere but could not find her can can she muttered to herself, I heard from the household that her can can was here admiring the flowers why can't I find her, at this moment, her can can and her maidservants appeared from behind her can can, gently said, little sister, what are you looking for? Manman turned around, startled at this moment, the system's voice reminded her, the time limit is only 10 minutes left hopefully, the player can quickly complete the task Manman panicked, thinking quickly she hurriedly pretended to be cheerful, asking her sister, elder sister, I have something very important to tell you in private can we go over that to talk? Hakan Khan agreed, and Manman led her to the octagonal pavilion as they walked, she thought, who could lay a hand on such a beautiful lady? But I'm sorry, Hakan it's for the good of both you and me I can only harm you at the octagonal pavilion, Hakan Khan asked, little sister Manman, what did you want to tell elder sister? Manman looked around cautiously I heard elder sister is about to marry Tong Ding, Hakan Khan replied, yes. After brother finishes the mourning period next month, the two families are planning the marriage matters Manman vehemently objected, you two cannot get married Hakan Khan didn't understand, asking, why not? Elder sister and Tong Ding are a matched couple we also like each other, so why can't we get married? Manman challenged, how does elder sister know Tong Ding likes you? What if I said the person Tong Ding likes is me? Hakan Khan didn't believe it, saying, what nonsense are you speaking, little sister? Although we are sisters, how can you joke about such a serious matter of marriage? This is no laughing matter Manman sighed inwardly it seems I still have to go to this step she approached Hakan Khan closely, with an arrogant manner Manman said, let me tell elder sister the truth I have actually been intimate with Tong Ding he told me he has never had romantic feelings for elder sister the one he loves is only me Hakan Khan's eyes welled up with tears jokingly saying, no, little sister can't be telling the truth Tong Ding is not that kind of person who can can, elder sister doesn't believe it, Manman didn't stop but continued, he is that kind of person elder sister, you're too self-confident do you know why Tong Ding doesn't like elder sister, he said elder sister looks stern all day, like a wooden rack, no different from a wooden person, making people feel tasteless who can can refuted, Unable to believe it he can't possibly see me that way don't say any more Manman became more excited he's actually right a person like elder sister, thinking herself a noble lady, believing every man would love her, in fact, they're just mocking elder sister behind her back. Hakan Khan shouted, I said stop, 
Little Sister Manman pushed Hakan Khan against a pillar, insisting, I still want to say, Elder Sister has been doted on since childhood Father also cared about Elder Sister a lot Even outsiders had a good impression of Elder Sister but I can never compare to Elder Sister no matter what what's the difference between elder sister and me? Tong Ding was supposed to be elder sister's fiancé tilde copyright, right? But isn't he just like me, abandoning Hakan? Elder sister is the pitiful, unloved worm Hakan can angrily raised her hand shut your mouth Manman grabbed her wrist tightly, gritting her teeth she then tightly grabbed and slapped Hakan can at this moment, the notification sound rang out. The host has completed the important plot mission Hakan Khan was stunned, saying, you manman thought to herself, finally, I've completed the mission I couldn't help but bring down the supporting character manman continued with full force, what's the point of elder sister hitting me? It's elder sister's fault for not managing her man well even if elder sister beats me to death, it's useless I can easily lure him away, and so can other women. That's for sure unless elder sister can stuff him back into the womb to be reborn, he can never change saying that. She threw a handkerchief at Hakan Khan's face wipe your tears others might think I'm bullying elder sister Manman turned and said, marriage is a once in a lifetime matter I've said enough elder sister should think it over carefully after walking some distance, Manman breathed a sigh of relief, thinking, that's fine, it's fine I almost couldn't hold back as she was walking, she suddenly stopped lit appeared right in front of her she calmed herself, thinking, I must stay calm here there's still some distance from the artificial mountain he probably didn't hear anything, right? Manman thought to herself, lit and I are husband and wife, nominally if I accept, Manman was shocked, feeling as if struck by lightning he heard everything she tried to remain calm, her voice trembling slightly your highness. You misunderstood I was just speaking nonsense earlier Tong Ding and I have no relationship whatsoever before she could continue, Hakan approached, her face pale were you really just talking nonsense? You have no connection with Tong Ding at all? Li Yi, his expression unreadable, asked calmly, this prince also wants to know whether the words you just said were true or false manment stood frozen between the two of them. Her mind racing warning warning the host is about to face a character breaking danger the alarm blared in her mind, causing her to tense up even more oh my god, why is this happening now? She hurriedly explained to Li Yi, her voice desperate, what I said earlier was true he did express his admiration for me, but I did not reciprocate Li Yi's eyes narrowed coldly since you didn't refuse him manman panicked, how did he know? How did he know? Li Yi thought, disappointed. I thought she was a simple person, but it turns out she's just like the others no different, nothing special manment saw his expression change, and her heart sank why does he a broken bar on the way back to the mansion, the two didn't exchange a word manman wanted to start a conversation but held back, thinking, he must be angry that night, in the west mist room, manman held the newly acquired jade bone healing ointment, the system's voice ringing in her mind host has completed the mission reward one box of jade bone healing ointment this ointment is a healing artifact apply it to the affected area, and after treatment, it can regenerate bones and tendons she thought to herself, this is indeed a good item maybe I could give it toe broken bar she hesitated, thinking of Li Yi but he's angry with me now I should wait for a better opportunity she tucked the ointment under her pillow and fell asleep meanwhile, Li Yi had a nightmare he struggled to escape from piles of soldiers corpses, shouting, somebody, save further he woke up in a cold sweat, disoriented after a while, he glanced at Manman's bed it was empty last night, I didn't let her return did she really not come back to sleep? He wondered the next morning, Li Yi finished dressing and looked at the bed next to him last night, she didn't return did she really sleep somewhere else? Manman's maid, Zan said sadly, Miss, you still haven't returned Manman was frantically applying makeup, her hands shaking look how haggard I am a broken bar don't you think it's enough? Zun took a deep breath it's enough, Miss you look so haggard you could scare away ghosts we should go quickly the prince has arrived at the goodwill hall Manman hurried, wait, I haven't taken my treasure yet, she grabbed a vial of peppermint oil here it is let's go Zun looked at her, concerned Miss, 
you're still acting crazy a broken bar in the main hall, Manman and Li Yi sat facing each other he asked with concern, where did you sleep last night? Did you not sleep well? Manman gripped the vial tightly, her voice choking up as she tried to act convincingly, I dare not hide the truth, your highness I stayed up all night Li Yi looked at her, his eyes narrowing why? Manman's voice trembled as she wiped away her tears, last night at the manor. Your Highness misunderstood something between me and Tong Ding although it was before I married Your Highness, seeing you upset made me feel terrible, so I knelt before the Buddha statue all night for self-reflection seeing her like this, Li Yi felt a pang of regret did I go too far? Man Man weakly wiped her tears, her mind racing I acted so convincingly he's bound to believe me a little should I act more deeply? No, that won't do tonight. I must return to the West Miss room I just remembered of the bed there is more comfortable she continued sobbing, applying more peppermint oil her tears flowed more heavily as she said miserably, your highness has hurt this servant's heart deeply seeing your highness unhappy makes me feel terrible Li Yi seemed touched and said, I truly didn't expect you to be so sensitive, to feel so bad over a small matter in her heart, Manman thought, oh mother, the effect of this peppermint oil is really potent just a little bit, and my eyes are already red outwardly, she gently and understandingly said, how is this a small matter? If your highness is unhappy, it's a big deal this servant is truly afraid a broken bar if your highness gets angry, you won't need this servant Anamabu who Li Yi watched her act so convincingly, thinking to himself, this woman's acting is truly formidable if I couldn't hear her inner voice. I might have believed her words he waved her over, and Manman stepped closer, surprised and curious your highness, he gently took her hand and said, you don't need to worry since you've married me, you'll be mine for this lifetime I won't abandon you Manman joyfully replied, your highness is so good to this servant this servant has nothing to repay you with only my wholehearted service but then, she realized with alarm that Li Yi had opened her hand, Silently holding up the peppermint oil Manman froze, at a loss for words Li Yi, not letting it go, asked further, why are you carrying peppermint oil with you? Manman became more flustered, her thoughts racing stay calm, don't break character a broken bar she quickly came up with an excuse, the weather is too hot now, and there are many mosquitoes around I carry it with me to keep them away, your highness. Manman, trying to maintain her composure added, mosquitoes seem to be naturally attracted to me, so I carry a bottle of peppermint oil with me to be prepared Li Yi seemed to believe her, replying, I see, that's how it is hearing this, Manman thought, he actually believes it suddenly, he grabbed her wrist, lifting her up and pulling her into his embrace alarmed, she found herself face to face with him as he brought his face close, sniffing the air around her the corners of your eyes smell of peppermint oil could it be that you were bitten by mosquitoes this morning? Manman hurriedly closed her eyes, flustered as she explained, no, it's not that this servant was bitten by mosquitoes yesterday and felt itchy, so after washing my face this morning, I applied a little he continued, seemingly unconvinced, so, it seems the Han Chinese have a constitution that attracts mosquitoes well. In this mountainous region of mine, we have mosquito repelling and sense how about you stay with me from now on? Manman tensed, swallowing hard although my little nest isn't as luxurious as the prince's residence, if I move here, I'll have no privacy at all but if I refuse he broken bar she glanced at Li Yi's darkening face and could only meekly, yet flatteringly, say, no, no. No being able to stay with your highness is this servant's blessing for three lifetimes. This servant is overjoyed to how could I not want to? Tears streamed down her face as she thought, oh no, I've lost my freedom now just then. The senior butler brought in the antidote he was startled to see the intimate scene between the two oh heavens, it's still daylight what are these two doing? However, he maintained a professional demeanor and said, your highness. Please take the antidote Manman quickly got down and watched as the prince drank the antidote the senior butler swiftly took his leave why does the prince have to take an antidote for poison? She wondered Li Yi looked at her and explained, this antidote is a reward from the emperor in the process of delivering it here, who knows how many people tampered with it. If we carelessly say it's poisoned, not only can we not catch the mastermind, 
but it will also drive a wedge between the Emperor and me Manman asked, so, your highness pretends to be poisoned, waiting for the mastermind to let their guard down and then seize the opportunity to strike back? Li Yi replied calmly, the poisoner is not foolish enough to be deceived there's no way to fool them so yes, I'm truly poisoned and not pretending while detoxifying, I can only reduce the toxicity, not eliminate it completely Manman worriedly said, you're paying too high a price Li Yi remained calm, quoting, the art of war states if you don't enter the tiger's den, how can you catch its cubs? Manman understood and nodded, indeed the meal proceeded as usual, but she suddenly paused, realizing, wait, for such an important matter, why is he telling me about it? Her heart raced as she pondered, could it be that after telling me this, he wants to kill me to silence me? Li Yi, upon hearing her inner thoughts, was speechless or perhaps he was provoked by something a broken bar surely nota he doesn't seem like that kind of person then why did the prince tell me about this? Leaning slightly, he coldly said, eat faster Manman hurriedly obeyed, focusing on finishing her meal so she could return to her room afterward, she began enthusiastically exercising, thinking, exercise trains the body and protects one's health suddenly, there was a knock on the door the senior butler entered accompanied by the imperial physician, and reported, Your Highness, the Emperor has sent the imperial physician to take your pulse the imperial physician paid his respects to the prince, Your Highness, may you live a long life you a very long life Li Yi accepted the greeting and allowed the physician to proceed as the physician took the prince's pulse, he inquired, has Your Highness regained any feeling in your legs recently? Li Yi coldly replied, no the imperial physician, unconvinced tapped on his legs and asked, really, not the slightest sensation? Li Yi's eyes narrowed as he responded, does the imperial physician think I'm lying? The imperial physician quickly bowed in apology, no, no this official dares not this official is simply unable to determine whether your highness's legs truly have no sensation or not that is why this official asked such a question if your highness's legs have regained sensation. It indicates a positive change in your condition but if not a broken bar Li Yi stroked his chin and seriously asked, but if not, then what? The imperial physician explained, your highness's legs are due to deteriorated bones the meridians have also been severely damaged if the meridians can recover, there is still a chance of healing but now, since your highness has no sensation. It shows that your meridians are completely blocked even if this official reconnects your bones, your highness will not be able to stand however, it's possible that as your highness moves around, the bones may naturally heal Li Yi dismissed him indifferently, dismiss either all of you, leave everyone immediately obeyed and left Manman, standing behind, looked at Li Yi with worry filled eyes the palace drama is written from the female lead's perspective there are very few scenes involving the prince, so I only know that he was injured on the battlefield, his legs shattered and bones broken, leaving him disabled but observing these past few days, it seems the situation is not as simple as it appears on the surface at that moment, Li Yi turned and smiled at her, did you hear that? The imperial physician said there's no cure for my legs for the rest of my life, I can only move around in a wheelchair Manman thought. Why is he smiling upon hearing that he'll be disabled for life? Shouldn't he be sad instead? She gently advised, Your Highness, don't talk about yourself like that he pondered for a moment and said, I'm just stating the facts living like this is meaningless Manman was horrified, her heart racing, don't say this guy is thinking irrationally okay, not now or I should give him that. Can looked at Manman with confusion why are you two here? Manman sighed in desperation feeling like the situation was spiraling out of control in the middle of this chaotic scene, with Can on one side and her future brother-in-law, Tong Ding, on the other, Manman thought, if this were a scene from a novel, it would be a classic intense jealousy moment if I weren't involved, I'd enjoy watching it unfold but now, watching has become a luxury Manman asked, sister, why are you here? Can replied, Sister and I came by for some tea why are you two here? Manman he glanced at Johnny, who was soon to be a concubine before the sisters could explain, Tong Ding loudly declared, it was Manman who asked me to meet her here he pointed directly at the stunned Manman and continued, today, your younger sister suddenly asked me to meet her, 
trying to bribe me with money to break off our engagement when I refused, she got angry and wanted to leave I didn't expect to run into you here Tong Ding hurriedly pulled out Manman's money bag, exclaiming, sister, look this is the evidence panicked, Manman realized the truth was out Tong Ding held up the money, feigning deep affection as he spoke to Can, theoretically, I shouldn't get involved in matters between two sisters, but your younger sister has gone too far she wants to come between us despite our deep feelings and long-standing betrayal out of respect for you, I will overlook this incident, but you must keep your distance from her to prevent further schemes Khan stared at him intently Tong Ding faltered, asking, Sister Khan, why are you looking at me like that, did I say something wrong? He took her hand affectionately, saying, Khan, let me take you home once we're there, I'll have my mother visit your family. To discuss our marriage Can looked down at her hand and asked solemnly, would you stake your mother's life and your family's future on the truth of what you just said? Tong Ding gripped her hand tightly and swore, Can, I've explained everything clearly how can you not trust me? Can glanced at him coldly, I never imagined you were this kind of person not only are you fickle, cowardly, and deceitful, but if Manman hadn't warned me about you, I might still be fooled Tong Ding's face drained of color Manman told you everything? Manman, standing in the middle, thought triumphantly, the palace schemer is truly impressive resolute and unhesitating totally barred us can turned away coldly, from now on, we will cut off all relations I will cancel our engagement once we return you can handle it yourself Tong Ding tried to dissuade her, can? Marriage is not something to be taken lightly don't be so impulsive I admit I was wrong please, don't be angry Han Chani, standing beside, chimed in, it's normal for people to make mistakes if he admits his mistake, you shouldn't dwell on it Kan couldn't believe it you call this a little thing? I'm dwelling on it? Tong Ding gripped Kan's arm tightly, refusing to let go, this is just a small matter I promise to be wholeheartedly devoted to you in the future whispers spread among the people present oh my, what's happening? It seems like he was secretly involved with the sister-in-law Can struggled to pull her arm away let go but Tong Ding stubbornly held on, saying, not until you forgive me Manman, seeing this, grabbed a cup of hot tea, shielding Can from behind, and flung the tea in Tong Ding's face, shouting, Take your filthy hands off her hand Chani stepped forward to intervene sister Manman, what are you doing? Tong Ding covered his face, howling, ah, it hurts I'm dying Manman pushed Khan back, shielding her protectively, Tong family, if I see you bully my sister again, I'll have someone beat you until your teeth fall out Khan backed away, bumping into someone behind her she hurriedly apologized, sorry. Sorry I didn't mean it please forgive me the man behind looked at her politely and replied, it's all right Tong Ding angrily shouted, you sour tempered woman. Hearing this, Khan was startled and scared Manman is in trouble now Khan stepped forward, pulled Manman's arm, and softly advised, sister, let's not get involved with them anymore let's go I see your eyes are red as if you're about to cry seeing this. Manman threw the teacup at the little servant girl remember to charge this tea to Master Tong the two of them decisively left the man who had been watching them thought to himself, there are such exquisite beauties in the capital Han Chani hurriedly ran after them, explaining, Sister Khan, wait for me Khan replied coldly, do you have anything else to say? Han Chani showed an embarrassed expression, admitting, I'm really sorry I didn't expect to run into Master Trung and cause this conflict with Sister Manman it's all my fault Can asked sarcastically, you really didn't expect it? Han Chani was puzzled, what do you mean? Khan said bluntly, it's clear since you called me sister, let me advise you, in this world, you're not the only smart one don't think everyone else is a fool Manman excitedly clapped her hands behind them, thinking, the female lead is truly cunning Han Chani then pulled Manman, who put on a pitiful look, and said, Sister Manman, did I do something wrong that made Sister Khan so mad? Why is she so angry? Manman turned and said slightly, you didn't do anything wrong it's my sister who's wrong wrong for having a friend like you but it's fortunate that she's corrected her mistake you don't need to worry anymore with a pitiful look. Manman tearfully added, what are you saying? Chani, did I do something wrong? Why are you angry, sister? At this moment, Kan's voice rang out, sisters, 
let's go Manman waved goodbye, her expression cheerful as she left. If nothing had happened sister is calling me I'll go first seeing Han Chani's look behind she was angry but could do nothing Kong Kong curiously asked what did you two do to her way is she so angry Manman innocently replied I didn't do anything we were just good friends catching up Kong Kong quickly advised someone like Han Chani loves scheming sister if there's nothing don't provoke her Manman childishly replied I know what I'm doing sister doesn't need to worry Kan sighed and said I'm going home I have something to do I won't go with you at this moment Zwan took out a bag of pastries from her robe Manman took it and handed it to Kan who indifferently said keep it I don't want it her attitude was dismissive this is the food I carelessly bought too much earlier sister take it and eat don't think that I'm apologizing for hitting you before I definitely can't apologize to you sister Kongan looked at Minan's mischievous expression silently thinking this sister is really adorable she quickly pinched her cheek and D swiftly left saying I'm going home I'll come another day to drink tea and eat pastries Manman looked at her blankly Z and said the young lady and you have a great relationship Manman stood dazed holding her cheek her voice was full of joy that night at the Prince Kyo Wang's mansion Manman returned just in time for dinner she thought I spent too much time at the tea house I thought I wouldn't make it back in time Lil was sitting reading a book while waiting for her saying you're finally back sit down and eat she hurriedly replied and sat down Li said with a strange tone look at this dish is it as good as the tea houses Manman was surprised thinking does he know about the tea house today how could he know Manman judged that the incident had just occurred an hour or two ago the prince couldn't have known so quickly unless she was certain he sent someone to follow her Li suddenly said I did send someone to secretly follow you Manman was surprised he knew what she was thinking but Outwardly she acted touched her e. Yes welling up saying your highness did it to protect my safety I'm so moved your highness is truly kind hearted I'm so touched I could cry but in her heart she felt the complete opposite this perverted dog damn it how dare he send someone to follow me she forced herself to act sincere and flattering I'm so fortunate to be married to your highness it's a blessing I cultivated in my past life he glanced at her and questioned if that's the case why did you still want to meet your lover in private manman quickly explained lover what lover your highness is my only lover if you say that it really hurts my heart li curiously asked then why did you still meet him manman hurriedly explained i didn't mean to i just ran into him on the road i wanted to clarify things with him but i really didn't meet him in private if you don't believe me you can ask zine li stared at her intently there was no other sound in her heart it seemed she wasn't lying to him he finally let it go saying eat your meal Manman breathed a sigh of relief finally able to eat she began to eat diligently after a while her stomach was full suddenly Li handed her a napkin to wipe her mouth Tran Vang back came in and reported it's time to go to the study room Manman quickly said your highness can I go to the study room too Manman thought the prince wants to go to the study room I haven't learned their writing if I could understand all the words in the books perhaps I could find a way out to massage the prince's legs hearing her say that Tran Vonak sweet thinking the study room is where the prince handles confidential matters and keeps many secret documents aside from me and a few trusted the prince won't let anyone else in the concubine asking this might anger the prince Le calmly asked why do you want to go to the study room Manman smiled to read books he didn't forbid it saying let's go I'll accompany you Tran Vong back looked at them in surprise the prince actually agreed to let her into the study room Manman began reading the books looking at the lines of text she murmured the writ thing isn't too different from ours but there are many rare characters Tran Vong back brought a candle closer and softly said concubine the prince says reading at night can harm the eyes a lamp would be better Manman blushed glancing at Lil who was engrossed in reading he caught her gaze and asked what's wrong Manman brought the book closer worriedly asking your highness there are some characters I don't understand could you teach me Lil was surprised teach you to recognize characters all right he agreed to quickly she had a bad feeling about this M man handed the book to Le who asked her do you know any medical skills she explained I don't understand medicine but I've heard that massage can unblock the meridians and help wounds on the legs heal faster I want to find someone to learn massage from so I can massage your highness legs she added and conveniently through massage I can apply the jade ointment on your legs he I'm so clever he asked which parts don't you understand man
pointed at the book here hear her. Elit took a brush pen and wrote on paper explaining as he wrote this is the law massage technique this character is pronounced Lai Manman rested her chin gazing at him in fascination I didn't expect the prince to be so knowledgeable and with illustrations I won't forget I don't need to worry about forgetting anymore after a while the prince said that's it Manman clapped happily when he finished thank you your highness you've been so kind to me I love you to death he said seriously I've never taught anyone before you're the first manman proudly replied I'm honored le warned too honored too soon I do things properly from start to finish since I've taught you I must teach you thoroughly copy these words 100 times tomorrow I'll check them myself if they're not good then no salty food my men cried out in alarm as a result manman cried bitterly copying the words while lamenting my premonition was right after a while Liz seriously said for this language's test you only got three points even if you took it with your toes you couldn't score higher than this copy this test 100 times for me Manman pleaded miserably teacher I beg you suddenly a loud voice called out Prince Zhao Manman woke up in fright luckily it was just a dream behind her Wan Nan's voice rang out why are you so terrified could it be that I'm your nightmare Manman started explaining how could that be your highness saved me from nightmares you're my god my ideal suddenly asked it's the second day now have you finished the homework car signed in the study room looking at the pages Manman wrote Liz said with a headache I never thought anyone could write so poorly Manman felt ashamed regretting making the prince laugh at her then Li told her come here I need you before he could finish Li grabbed her wrist and pulled her into his embrace Manman shyly asked what does your highness want to do he raised his hand and caressed her face his voice gentle now that you're in my embrace with just the two of us h air what do you think i want to do she blushed flustered thinking what does he want to do could it be that he wants to be lewd in broad daylight lip pushed her down pinning her under him staring intently manman shut her eyes tightly in fear thinking to herself does the prince want to take advantage of me because of my beauty i'm just a young girl in my teens i can't do this then she thought but the prince is so handsome it might not be so bad maybe i could thinking that manman parted her lips wait Ding Li stared at her intently then suddenly said you're really interesting Manman opened one eye and looked at him in surprise exclaiming ha then she suddenly came to her senses screaming and trying to push Li away but Li grabbed her wrist and pulled her into his embrace he started guiding her hand to practice writing speaking gently and slowly he said Manman shy thought the prince wants to teach me how to write properly I overdoed things she blamed herself for the misunderstanding after a while Liz sternly pointed at the paper telling her write it again yourself Manman thought angrily he's also at fault here she turned to Leah and said could I write somewhere else I feel a bit strange like this strange how he asked seriously what's strange about it do you find my legs uncomfortable able to sit on her face quickly showed delight no no sitting on your highness's legs is very comfortable then she diligently continued practicing writing Lou watched her from behind then suddenly leaned in closer Manon's hand shook and she stopped angrily saying your highness what are you doing I'm still writing seeing her blotted strokes Liz said seriously your mind is not calm enough writing requires focus without being affected by external factors she cursed him inwardly for being so shameless Liz sternly tapped the table a few times reminding her continue Manman wrote angrily at this moment Liz suddenly reached from behind and touched her necklace Manman turned around angrily he again looked serious saying focus on your writing don't minutes d me manman thought this scoundrel is definitely doing it on purpose before i only found him unpredictable and hard to grasp i didn't expect him to be so despicable to Lee repeated despicable this time i'm warning you not to misbehave otherwise i'll really get angry Lee raised his hand and smiled i won't misbehave manman resumed writing but this time the prince placed his hand on her waist manman angrily leaned back shouting your highness she pushed his hands away as if taking advantage he murmured go with the flow manman found a rope and tied his hands saying cheerfully great now i can write in peace in her heart little manman thought men only know how to affect my writing speed li looked at his bound hands gazed at her fondly and whispered even small creatures have many tricks man 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 began practicing writing after a while she focused on reading books in the moonlit evening manman returned to her room writing in the morning reading books in the afternoon today was truly a a.
Happy day thinking of this she glanced at Le who was engrossed in reading and added if only that scoundrel didn't bother me it would be even better although the books he recommended gave me some insights perhaps seeing Manman deep in thought last is something wrong Manman brought a box closer and asked your highness I've recently learned mass techniques may I give you a massage Le was delighted that she was studying you really want to massage me he happily agreed Manman sat down the box approached him placed her hand on his shoulders and said then I'll need to remove your clothes your highness manman carefully removed his outer robe it was quickly taken off but when she reached his inner garment he stopped her stop a massage like this is enough he disagreed but the book says not to massage through fabric plus I need to apply ointment on you it'll be difficult for me to do that with your clothes on she gently persuaded the prince please allow me to remove it he didn't stop her anymore sighing he said if you're not afraid then do as you say manman began removing his inner garment in her heart she thought what's wrong with exposing his legs she rolled up his pant legs his legs were covered in wounds she hesitated he looked down intently and asked does it make you feel sick manman turned her head thinking why would I feel sick she remembered years ago my father beat me until I was covered in wounds but but luckily my grandparents cared for me and never looked down on me how could I find someone else's wounds sickening she looked at him seriously and replied it's fine it'll get better trust me I'll definitely help you recover Le turned away clutching his robe tightly and said in a low voice don't give others false hope manman moved closer to him I'm not giving any an e false hope manman took his hand and looked at him sincerely saying I know you can recover your highness how about we make a bet I can heal you if I win you must agree to one condition of mine Lu looked at her intently he thought there are those who have caused me suffering but also those who are gentle with me she extended her finger and said seriously shall we bet his heart fluttered those wounds have left scars in my heart but that gentleness also wants to spread to me la made a gesture to her I bet Manman thought I want him to experience that gentleness too Manman gently rolled up his pants she lightly touched the wounds on his legs Le watched her intently gentleness caressed her face a sweet scene unbolded suddenly he heard her thoughts so even the great demon king can be gentle Le thought to himself so in her heart I'm the great demon king after the massage was done Manman stood up and said to him tomorrow is the day Husha passes through Namo gate I need to pack and leave she continued your highness, rest early I'll go take a bath and return shortly then she left in the bath manman bathed while singing thinking of Lee she blushed shyly then she returned to the room quietly opened the door and tiptoed inside but but accidentally bumped into the edge of a table Lee's voice suddenly rang out what's wrong she clutched her waist in pain and replied it's nothing I just carelessly bumped into the table pardon me I woke you up Lee sat up and looked at her saying come here and let me see she hurriedly refused it's not necessary your highness please go back to sleep Lee coldly repeated come here don't make me say it again manman frightened quickly replied yes scared she thought the prince's anger was terrifying manman gently lay on the bed and lifted her robe Lee holding medicine leaned over and asked does it hurt she replied no it doesn't hurt Lee already angry opened the medicine bottle and growled still saying it doesn't hurt manman turned away trembling with her eyes shut tight turning Back she thought the prince I s really scary tonight he took the medicine and gently rubbed it onto her lower back area manman seemed relieved letting out a soft moan her tense body trembled seeing this Lee slapped her buttocks hard reminding her not to move she thought to herself it's not that I want to move but it's itchy but she glanced at Lee curiously why are the prince's ears so red after a while they went to bed each on their own Lee from the other side rested his chin on his hand watching her sleep soundly memories of her massaging his legs came back his voice full of doting affection he couldn't help but scold her you fool the next morning manman carefully groomed and dressed herself beautifully when she was helping lit change clothes he looked at her intently and asked today you've dressed up like this do you want everyone to pay attention to you in her heart manman thought i couldn't care less about that but i don't want to lose to that green tea girl han chani not only do i want to compete with her in
tea arts but I also want tea. Oh outshine her with my beauty only then will I be satisfied but outwardly Manman Shire replied I don't care about others I just want all the attention to be on your highness hearing this Lith thought to himself. What a liar at this moment Zek came in and reported to the maid oh no the young lady has run into trouble Manman anxiously asked what happened then the system announced congratulations host has triggered a random mission please go to the Jongin. Manman was immediately tasked with rescuing the female lead, and the time limit for this mission was three hours, and the reward was a special bag, with failure resulting in painful punishments Manman frowned, reflecting on how previous missions had been critical plot points, but this one was optional could something have gone wrong midway? She thought she heard the system's voice the mission is optional time is limited please complete it quickly, host Manman muttered angrily system she turned to the prince your highness, I need to go to Jong'un Manor for a bit the prince, puzzled, asked, aren't you and are not on good terms, why are you in such a hurry, Manman remembered she needed an excuse and continued, although I don't like her, she is my sister by blood she clenched her fists, determined to play her final card I'm telling the truther I really don't want to stay in the palace and watch you marry other women so, please let me go in his mind. The prince heard a pleading voice agree quickly agree quickly he probed, what if I don't agree, Manman began to threaten, then tomorrow, I won't write or do any homework the prince sighed, thinking, she's so spoiled all right you can go, but you must return before the hour of the pig he pinched her cheek and handed her a jade pendant take this if anyone at Jong'un Manor tries to stop you, show them this Manman accepted it happily thank you. Your Highness you're the kindest person I've ever met he gently patted her head and replied, be careful on the carriage, Manman's voice rang out, I'll explain this to elder sister she refused the marriage, angering our father that's why she's being punished with incense torture Wang and maid, sitting with her, replied, indeed, the young lady refused to marry into the Tong family and was nearly beaten to death we servants had no other way to help we beg the two young ladies to please help us this time Manman absently replied, I know I don't want to call that man my brother-in-law, so don't overthink it Wang and thought to herself, the elder young lady is right the two young ladies might seem tough on the outside, but they're soft-hearted this time, the elder young lady is saved at Jong'un Manor, Mrs. Hua was being held back by several maids as she tried to rush in to rescue and she kept screaming, stop beating her if you keep beating her, she'll die Huading Tong, holding the whip coldly, replied, if she dies, it's her own fault for defying me Ajin, I'll ask you one last time Mia will you marry or not, covered in wounds, Ajin resolutely said, no no marriage Huading Tong angrily raised the whip then I'll beat you to death today even if it's just your corpse, I'll carry it to the Tong family just as he was about to strike, a voice called out, Lord H, Lady H has returned Huading Tong was surprised Manman, why is she here now, Manman entered and said, father, mother, what's going on, why resort to such violence, Huading Tong asked, why are you here, Manman he glanced at Tachin and thought, the beating was too cruel if I had arrived a step later, this female lead would have really been beaten to death outwardly displeased, she said, today, the second young lady passed through the gate, and my heart is not at ease I've come to console elder sister what's going on here, Quading Tong coldly replied, your elder sister's matter has nothing to do with you you should leave quickly Manman persisted, father is so angry it can't just be because elder sister wants to call off the marriage with Tong Ding, right? And stopped her, second sister, don't talk nonsense this is between me and Tong Ding you shouldn't get involved Manman refuted, I'm not talking nonsense I'm telling the truth father, elder sister is calling off the marriage with Tong Ding because he likes me Huading Tong shouted in shock, what, who does Tong Ding like? Before Manman could answer, and cut in, father, don't listen to her nonsense this has nothing to do with her manman firmly grasped his hand and said, I'm not talking nonsense if father doesn't believe me, you can call Trong Ding here to verify it at the door, the elderly lady and madam Hua were stunned manman continued, moreover, this matter isn't my fault it's his fault for liking me he knew I was to be his future sister-in-law yet still liked me it's his fault Hua Ding Tong was speechless you're still talking nonsense, manman. Angry at the insult to her mother, 
defended Madame Hua. What right do you have to say my mother is unfit? My mother is a thousand times better than you, father, who sells his daughters for glory. Hui Ding Tong gritted his teeth. Shut your mouth. How dare you speak of me like that? He raised his cane high. Manman stretched out her hand to shield and and cried out in alarm. Both Madame Hua and Anne ran to protect her. Manman continued defiantly. Why should I shut my mouth? Why shouldn't I speak the truth about you? Are you afraid I'll make it a reality? Madame Hua advised her to stop, but Manman stepped forward, saying, That's right initially, I was willing to drown myself in the lake rather than become the concubine of the Prince of Oa but you still forced me to marry the Prince of Now Elder Sister doesn't want to marry Tong Ding, but you're still forcing her to do so. Manman confronted her father, Hui Ding Tong directly in your heart, there's only glory and wealth, but no concern for us compared to my mother, you are truly unfit to be a parent. Hui Ding Tong was enraged, his eyes bulging as he raised his cane shut up shut up and rushed over and hugged Manman to protect her. Manman thought, my two sisters are suddenly so protective. Manman took out the jade pendant and struck Hui Ding Tong with it. How dare you? You dare not. Hui Ding Tong stopped. Lowering his cane is this the Chilun Jade Pendant gifted by the Emperor to the Prince of Ao? How did you get it? Manman replied confidently, I received it from the Prince of Ao himself you should know what that signifies. Hui Ding Tong clenched his fists, shocked I can't believe the Prince of Ao favors her so much that he gave her this pendant if he finds out I struck here a broken bar before he could think further. An announcement came His Highness the Prince of Ao has arrived Hui Ding Tong cried out in alarm, the Prince of Ao is here suddenly? He must have learned I struck Manman this is not a good day for the Prince and his consort Li. The Prince's subordinate, entered coldly I heard someone struck His Highness's person Hui Ding Tong knelt, trembling Your Highness Manman approached the Prince Your Highness Li glanced at her arm, noticing blood seeping through her sleeve he gestured to Tran Vong back who understood and handed the cane to the Prince Li's face darkened with anger as he swung the cane forcefully, lashing it across Hui Ding Tong's back Hui Ding Tong was covered in bloody wounds Li said, unsatisfied, that was still too light Hui Ding Tong, trembling, threatened, Your Highness, you mistreat the descendant of a Marquis at your whim aren't you afraid of being impeached by the censorate? Li mocked. Impeached? I've been impeached so many times look has anyone ever succeeded in impeaching me? Hui Ding Tong screamed in pain as Li stepped closer, grabbing his hair and lifting his face do you believe that even if I killed you here today, I could still walk away unscathed? Terrified, Hui Ding Tong knelt and begged, your highness, I was wrong, I dare not do it again please spare me the dowager lady and Madame Hua watched from the side, then also knelt and cut out please, your highness. Spare him this time Li turned to Manman do you want to spare him? At that moment, the system announced, mission accomplished Manman said, that's enough for now she thought, although the Prince of Oa enjoys the Emperor's favor and can do as he pleases, if one day the Emperor no longer favors him, his actions today will become a sword hanging over his head Li heeded her words and replied, very well he was deeply moved. Realizing that her concern was not only for her father but also for him Li lowered the cane and said, if that's the case, let's go home but I will say this one last time Manman belongs to me anyone who dares to lay a hand on her will die with that threat. Li spoke gently to Manman your highness is waiting for you outside Madame Hua approached Manman, concerned thankfully, the Prince of Ao was here otherwise, it would have been disastrous Manman, don't talk nonsense anymore in the future Manman replied. Yes, mother and also came to her and said, my two sisters, I heard from Naha that you came to rescue me today thank you Manman showed disdain no need to thank me, sister I was just in a bad mood and came to visit, not to rescue you don't flatter yourself she then handed in a vial this medicine is for you don't overthink it I don't want others to say that one man's sister got beaten black and blue and touched Manman's nose gently and joked, right, right. Right I'll definitely apply it properly, so you don't have to worry Manman, embarrassed, ran off I'm not worried about you, sister don't flatter yourself the Prince of Ao is waiting for me I'm going ahead and watched her leave with a smile my little sister is so adorable. Outside the Jong'un Manor gates, a carriage was waiting the servant relayed the message that the lady was invited to board Manman stepped into the carriage and shyly asked, your highness. 
Today isn't cold why did you come out when I had just passed through the gate? The prince replied calmly, I heard you were being bullied, so I hurried over Manman was flustered, thinking, did someone spread the news? Oh lord, the prince broke his seclusion for me how touchingly silently cursed, you fool as they returned to the manor, Manman pushed Liz wheelchair the head butler hurriedly reported, they're back the lady is waiting for you at the jade pavilion Lee turned to Manman and said, what is she waiting for me for? I'm tired go to the mountain sea residence Manman thought, ah, she's waiting for you of course, she wants to do this and that in the bedchamber at night do you want to break your illusion? Lee read her thoughts and pondered, why are you so eager to push me away to someone else? He urged, let's go. Lady Hua Manman obediently pushed him to the Mountain Sea residence inside the home chambers, a maid's voice reached the lady, who was fanning herself while waiting hearing the maid, she hurriedly asked, the prince has returned, the maid replied, no, he's not coming to the lady's place upon hearing this, the lady was disappointed, and the fan in her hand dropped the maid continued, moreover, I heard that Lady Hua has been spending nights in the Prince's Mountain Sea residence these past few days. The lady's face turned pale everything around the Prince is managed by Lady Hua her face distorted with anger the maid worriedly cried out, my lady a broken bar the lady's tears streamed down she grabbed the maid's hand and said, go and summon the Prince tell him I've fainted the maid ran out, shouting, someone come quickly the lady has fainted the lady lay on the bed biting her finger and waiting anxiously at the mountain sea residence, a sweet fragrance permeated the air Manman gently massaged the prince's feet suddenly, a voice from outside reported, prince, a message from the jade pavilion the lady has fainted lit puzzled, said, if she was fainted, summon the palace physician why call me, the maid replied, the physician has already been summoned the physician said the lady suffered from anger and distress, causing her to faint from rage Le thought it must be something serious Manman asked, Prince, do you want to go see how the lady is? The system issued a warning please maintain character settings Le looked at her and asked in a deep voice, do you think I should go see her? Manman bit her finger, thinking, I forgot to maintain character settings and almost broke it I must stay in character and not lose the bet she began acting deeply. Her eyes brimming with tears tonight is the night for the prince to enter the bedchamber with the lady of course, the prince should go see her in her heart, she mocked, what is there to see, even a toe could figure it out the lady is just putting on an act to deceive the prince it will be a long time before I let her succeed Lin inquired, if I go to the jade pavilion, what will you do, Manman obediently replied, of course, I will calmly wait for the prince's return last further, what if I don't return tonight? Manman felt as if struck by lightning her heart ached, and she held back tears no matter where the prince goes, no matter how long the prince is away, I will always wait for you as long as you turn around, you will see me but in her heart, she was angry go, go, go away and don't come back Lee lovingly cupped her face, gently wiping her tears from the corners of her eyes in a doting tone, he said, there's no need for this what is there to cry about? Manman stood up in surprise, trying to explain, I'm not crying at all it's just the wind blowing in my eyes Li mocked her with a smile at this moment, a maid entered and reminded them Prince Li sighed and said, Manman, change your clothes and come with me Manman was surprised her heart was full of questions huh? Why are we going there to eat melons? Li's thoughts were pierced by the question at the, in her heart. Despite her calm exterior, Hanani was gritting her teeth in frustration that hateful manman she just won't leave determined, Hanani thought, tonight, I must find a way to make the prince love me I can't let this opportunity slip away Lee, having overheard her, asked, if you're so useless, why did you marry into the prince's manner? Hanani put on a pitiful look and replied, the marriage was arranged by senior Ning Dang and the princess herself Linter locked his fingers and said sternly, before the late Empress Dowager considered this marriage, she consulted the Han family everyone in the Han family agreed to it seeing your indifferent attitude, did the Han family threaten you? Hanani hurriedly explained, panic evident in her voice, no, no, no one forced me I willingly married into the prince's manner hearing this, Li continued. The late Empress Dowager brought you here to suppress my killing intent, but let's not mention that whether your words are true or false, 
You tell me you fell ill right after marrying and even caused me to visit you in the middle of the night tell me, why did I take you as a wife, is it because my daily life lacks excitement? Hanani, realizing the gravity of the situation, knelt before Li looking pitiful as she admitted her mistake I'm sorry, your highness I know I was wrong from now on, I will take good care of myself Li coldly responded, why would you think I care at all whether you're ill or not? I just want you to choose either stay obediently in the Fuga Palace from now on and don't bother me with anything, or pack up and leave immediately. From then on, we'll have nothing to do with each other which one do you choose? Hanani's heart grew colder. As she heard this I cannot choose either option I cannot leave I married into this place to become the future regent prince's consort if I cannot stay by his side in the future. I cannot become his most important woman La was surprised, thinking, the future regent prince, what does she mean? Could she have predicted what will happen in the future? It seems I need to probe her more deeply Hanani looked at him sincerely and pleaded, I beg you, your highness your concubine has been truly devoted to you from the start please don't send me away as long as I can stay, I will do anything La asked, you really agree to do anything? Without hesitation, Hanani replied. Yes, I will do anything you command, your highness Hanani thought to herself, although it's said that the future prince will become the regent prince with great power, right now he's just a nobody, unable to even stand properly his temperament is also strange no woman would truly love him, but if I use some tactics a broken bar moving closer and looking at him intently, she added, even if your highness wants my life, I'm willing to give it to you in her mind, she thought. As long as I employ some schemes, I can show him my true sincerity the prince will definitely be moved by that.